there's a little bit of residual bitterness just because nobody knows, <laughs> very few people know about catch wrestling or know about that history, even though it was, like you mentioned, it was such an important part of American culture. Yes. Uh, and so they, I think sometimes they get a little annoyed at uh, all the all the attention going to the Brazilian jiu-jitsu guys, which I, I can understand to a certain extent if I come from that background. Well, let me say this. Um, and a lot of my, quote, catch wrestling brothers might not like this. Um, but the best martial art in the world, in my opinion, is Brazilian jiu-jitsu, okay? And there's, it's not because, you know, you can beat someone up or this or that. It's because it truly is for everyone. Yeah. And that you yeah. can do it for a long period of time. Uh, the catch wrestling, uh, you don't see, I don't want to be Billy Robinson with the cane, you know, walking around and just pointing. Uh, I have, I've had a total of like 17 really surgeries, procedures all over my body, uh, neck, elbow. If you can see, I can't even, this is, this, this is as much as I can straighten my arm, okay? Yeah. I've had yeah. so many elbow surgeries that I can't even straighten my arm. I have cervical stenosis. Uh, any little twerk of my neck, I could be paralyzed. I've had five ACL knee um, injuries, three actual surgeries. Uh, but still, I can do jiu-jitsu. I can still do jiu-jitsu competitively. Yeah. I can, yeah. uh, if I only had one arm, we have a blind person in our class, okay? <laughs> We have lots of women, we have big people, small people, older people, younger people. It truly is for everyone. And what the catch wrestlers, what they don't understand is that it's not sustainable. Yeah. yeah. It's not for everyone. Uh, you can make it that way, but matter of fact, the school that I belong to now, um, like I went through a lot of schools because they would open up back in the, the 90s a week later, they were closed. A month later, they were closed. So I was going back and forth, and I came to the school, but right at the time, I was really getting it to the heart of catch wrestling. So what I was doing is I retaught myself wrestling. Uh, I would go to clinics all over the United States, uh, learning parterre wrestling uh, on the ground. And so but, what I want to do I'll interrupt you. So parterre when I learned it from Randy was basically the part of Greco where you um, try and flip the guy over, right? You're talking about. Yes. Yeah. I'm talking, see, that's one of the, the weaknesses of freestyle wrestling. Mm -hmm. Their parterre is, I don't want to say it's simplistic. It's simply getting a gut wrench or getting a leg lace and just exposing the shoulders. That's right. it. And when people start going to freestyle and Greco, they lose that parterre from the American folk style collegiate. We're the only people in the entire world that that does folk style wrestling parterre on the mat. Uh, and some people say that we should get rid of it because all of a sudden we have these people in America who, you know, they've been doing folk style and collegiate and all of a sudden they go to freestyle competing with people who've been doing freestyle all their life. But, and ben Askin said that folk style wrestling is it's like a brother of jiu-jitsu mm -hmm. and it's so right it's very very similar but like if you only train with a, a freestyle wrestler a greco wrestler they haven't really done folk style wrestling for years and that's why in an interview with randy couture uh he said that he, he had really forgotten about the power of the parterre wrestling because again he was so obsessed with the gut wrenching, the leg laces. On the bottom, you just flatten out like Superman. That's all you have to do. Um, but more people are bringing a little bit about, you know, the half Nelsons, the reverse Nelsons. So before I went to the school that I, uh, that I sort of affiliate with now, uh, I was, you know, really focused on trying to make modern, real catch wrestling. So I would take, um, legal moves and I would take them to the edge. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, this is a new school. I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna show these jujitsu guys, you know, the power of real catch wrestling, not uh, this shoot wrestling stuff. Problem was, I was hurting a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And these people were really nice. And I was like, you know what? If I, 
for the first time, I got a good group of nice people. I'm not going to hurt them. I'm like, I just put the catch wrestling to the side. And I would rather be with a good group of people than try to, you know, do this thing that's going to hurt people. Because the thing with jujitsu, I know everybody knows people get hurt in jujitsu, but it's, the things are not going like directly against like some of your joint, your the cranks, the neck cranks. Right. Um, right. Uh, I could, you could still do it, mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. still, it just wasn't worth it to me. 